Another thing that needs to be done is adjustment of the pan tension and also the pan position. After the traps are dyed and waxed, uh, there's some slight adjustments that need to be made before they can actually be set in the ground and work at their best. Um, one thing that needs to be done is to check from the factory that all these J-hooks on the swivels and on the end of the chain are crimped all the way. If not, in the manufacturing process, sometimes they're not totally crimped. Be sure they're crimped all the way so the chain cannot come out and get loose. Um, you'll lose a trap that way and an animal as well, so you want to avoid that. Go over the traps, be sure that they're in good shape. Uh, some of the traps have stamped jaws rather than cast. This particular trap has cast jaws. They're very smooth right out of the box, but for traps that aren't, you want to just take a small file and on the edges of the jaw, which would make contact with the foot, you would want to file that off and make it round so there's not a cutting edge. Another adjustment that you want to make is um, the pan tension adjustment. This part of the trap is called the pan or the pedal. This is what the animal steps on. These traps have a set screw and a nut which can be loosened or tightened to get the right tension. You don't want too light of a tension or a hair trigger. The trap can even go off with wet covering if you get a rain. The increase in the covering is enough to set these traps off if they have a hair trigger. So you don't want a hair trigger. What you can do is take a small socket driver or a screwdriver and either work the slotted end of the screw or you can work the nut on the opposite side and just tighten that nut with the socket driver. You can play with them a little bit and you always want to do this after the trap has been waxed. You don't want to do it before the trap has been dyed and waxed because this area will fill up with wax and your tension will be different. So you want to do this after the dyeing and waxing process. You just simply tighten or loosen this screw until you get the right tension. Now that is just a little bit stiff so I want to back that off just a little bit. They even make a little tool that shows how many pounds it takes to set these down but I don't, I don't use anything like that. This is about the right tension for a coyote, maybe just a little bit less. That's about four pounds of pan tension. The next thing you want to do is to set the trap and see how the pan travels in relation to the dog. Now the back part of the frame here where the dog or the trigger is attached can be bent forward or backward in order to move the position of this pan. If the trap comes from the factory in the wrong position you just have to modify this. Um, what you want is just you want a level pan when that trap is set. So you want that pan to look just about like that. You don't want it up in the air like this. You don't want it down too low. You want it just like that. You want just a minimum amount of travel in the, uh, the pan and the dog connection. Now the pan is level. We have a minimum amount of travel in the uh, dog and the uh, pan connection. When the trap is stepped on, it will fire. So that trap is properly adjusted that way. The only remaining thing to do Again, with the file, a lot of these parts are stamped, particularly the dog. And you want to be sure that that dog is square and not round on the ends from being stamped. So you can do that with just a few strokes of the file to be sure that you've got a good square surface. And that makes good connection with the pan. Um, that takes care of the trap preparation. A little bit about some other equipment that we'll need. Um, there are many staking and fastening systems for these sets out in the field. Um, I'm just going to show you two today. Most trappers in Kentucky use, use stakes. They stake their traps. There are cable type anchors, toggle anchors. They work very well in certain types of soil and in certain types of conditions, but not all of them. Um, stakes are one of the most uh, universal and, and dependable ways of, of anchoring these, these sets. Um, you should use on coyotes in most of our soil in Kentucky no shorter than a 24 inch stake. In some sandy areas, uh, loamy areas down around creek bottoms and in, uh, river bottoms you might even want a longer stake. But these are just half inch reinforcing rod ground to a dull point on one end, 
the head of a washer welded on the other end. And that's all there is to those. These are rusted, dyed, and waxed the same way as the traps. We want everything in the ground to be basically odor free as much as possible. Um, some trappers paint these and let them dry, and uh, they work very well that way too. But I just I go ahead and just dye and wax all my equipment personally. Um, in most situations, one stake will work on a coyote trap. For instance, this trap here, it has a, a swivel and a closure on the end of it. The stake is slipped through that and driven into the ground. And that, that especially with the longer chain, uh, these coyotes have a tendency to jump upwards when they're caught. In a very, very short chain, they can, they can jack a stake out of the ground and escape, which is a bad thing. But with a little bit longer chains on these models that we've shown you here, and a two-foot stake, you'll hold the big, big majority of all your coyotes in any soil. If there's any doubt about being able to hold a coyote in wet soil or soft soil, you can use what they call a double staking method. This trap is set up with a double stake system. And this is just a connection from the end of the chain to a J-hook which goes to a plate that has two holes in it. The traps are staked crossways like this into the ground. When they're driven into the ground, they're cross staked like this. And the coyote can never get a dead pull on either of those stakes. They hold tremendously. So this is a, this is a very good way of holding coyotes in any soil that you think might be suspect. So this is another, um, another good thing to remember. Right now I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the equipment we actually use out in the field now that the traps and uh, the stakes and so forth have been dyed and waxed. Just a little bit of some of the equipment. Um, a lot of the equipment you use depends on um, what your situation is in your respective area. If you have to walk a lot like I do, a lot of trappers carry a pack basket like this which is used for carrying the traps and the stakes and the digging equipment and so forth. Also a little pouch on the back to carry different odds and ends. I also carry a bucket that has uh, dirt covering or peat moss, some of my different coverings. In it I also carry some of my lures and baits. Another thing that's very handy is a dirt sifter. This is for sifting dirt over your traps, dirt and covering so that nothing gets between the jaws of the trap that would be big enough to impede its its usefulness. Um, a good pair of pliers is always handy. Um, just used for adjusting traps. Uh, also used when you're, when you're snaring. A lot of your coyote trappers are also snare men, so a good pair of pliers is handy. Um, socket drivers, screwdrivers, files, and so forth for making adjustments in the field is needed. They can all be carried in a small pouch. Uh, trappers are always digging when they're catching coyotes. So we have a variety of different types of digging tools. This is just one. This is used for digging trap beds, dirt holes, cleaning out the area after a set. Um, just a multi-purpose tool. It becomes like a third hand after a while. This is another multi-purpose, very useful tool. It's kind of a three-in-one. This has a heavy head on the end of it with a piece of flat plate bent and sharpened, welded on the other end. The, the head is used for driving stakes. The other end is used for chopping trap beds, chop, chopping frozen ground, chopping up the sod. This end here has a shovel built into it. This is used for digging the dirt holes. So trappers are always digging. Um, another thing, on uh, all your coverings except peat moss, you're gonna have to have some kind of a pan cover. Uh, you can use fiberglass screen. Uh, there's many different types of pan covers, clean plastic, uh, I just use wax paper. Do's and don'ts on, on trapping with these uh, steel traps for coyotes, foothold traps, need to be set very carefully, they need to be bedded, they need to be covered and operational uh, because of our many different types of weather systems. We have rain, we have snow, we have freezing. Sometimes these traps have to sit in the ground for a week or better before they get a visit from a coyote. So. It's, it's necessary that when that coyote comes by, that trap is operational. Uh, that's done uh, in a variety of different ways. Uh, some